The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Clem and I've always dreamt of putting metal onto plastics. So in this episode, we're going to build a galvanizing machine that allows us to put real metal on 3D printed parts or even rubber duckies. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. All the commonly used metal parts have to be protected from the environment because little blank screws can turn into a lot of rusty stuff very quickly when exposed to the environment. So what the factories do is coat these metal parts with other metals that make them more resistant to the environment. And that's usually done with galvanizing or electroplating. And that is just putting a tiny amount of a metal onto another metal to give it a protective coating. And what we are going to do today is build a machine that does that at a small form factor and it's easy to control. Because one thing that I always hated when doing galvanizing is having to unplug and plug in power supplies and having to deal uh, with a lot of cables and stuff. I want it to be neat and easy to use. So we're making an Arduino controlled, simple galvanizing machine that we can program and set to different values if we want. Electroplating metals is of course a core skill for people doing metal work, so that's awesome. But also I would like to coat plastics to give them a metalish look, to make prototypes look more like the actual thing that comes later. So if you are maybe prototyping some stuff in 3D printed plastics and you want to make them look as if they were real machined metal, that would be an option to make them light, fast and cheap. So we're also exploring how to put metal, real metal onto 3D printed parts and even flexible ones like this ducky. Electroplating or galvanizing is usually done with two metals and an electrolyte. You have one metal on the anode and one metal on the cathode. The one on the cathode is the part that you want to be coated. The one on the anode is the one that has to give off electrons to an electrolyte and that electrolyte passes them on to the anode. In chemical terms, it's a lot more complicated like that, but this is an electronics channel, so we focus on the practical implications. So what we would need, for example, to cover an iron screw in copper is the iron screw on the cathode, a piece of copper, for example, a copper tube like here, on the anode and an electrolyte. And in that case, it's copper sulfate mixed with deionized water. The parts needed for this project are an Arduino Uno, because that is readily available and everybody knows how to use them. I'm making a PCB that goes on top of it, so an Arduino Uno shield. On this PCB will be a relay, an encoder and a button and maybe some additional parts that I can use for future development. So I can easily control it, just push the button and it activates, set times or other values with the encoder and activate it with the button, very easy to use. The relay is a five volt coil type. So five volts from the Arduino Uno are enough to engage it. And it controls a 24 volt current source that we get from our PSU. And that's an XP power PSU that uh, provides me with five volt and 24 volts. Five volts for the Arduino, 24 volts for the galvanizing. And it also has over current protection. So galvanizing can draw a lot of current. It may short out the power supply, so if that happens, the power supply should just shut off and not destroy itself. And that is very uh, important because if you just pump more and more current into that, the cables will get warm, 
you may short it, you may uh, set the power supply on fire. So always be aware that you use a protected power supply. So in my case, if the current draws is more than three amps, it will shut down. This is the schematic for my PCB design. As you can see, there are a lot of parts that are like for measuring stuff and, and other things. I got pretty sophisticated with it, but I'm just focusing on trying out what I need to know. And I've implemented a current uh, sensor on there just to know if the power supply should shut off so I can manually trigger it to shut off, but turns out that's not needed because I've chosen a power supply that protects itself. So I'm using that PCB design, send it over to Eisler, who is providing the PCBs for this project, thankfully, and then it's time to assemble the PCB. I discovered that the footprint for my INA219 current sensor is wrong. It's okay if you use the SOIC part, but not for the smaller one. I can't remember how that's called. So be aware that in the uh, official CACAD repository, um, if you want to use that sensor, use the bigger one or change the pinout in the libraries. That's wrong. So I tried to add bugging it, but seems that didn't work either. So let's omit that current sensor. We don't need it for now. The power supply does that job. So let's go onward with assembly. One thing that bugs me with commonly available electroplating or galvanizing sets is that usually you have a big chunky power supply, like a wet where you do your galvanizing stuff and a lot of cables and stuff. So I don't want that clutter. I want to have a single unit where you can put in the bed where you have your electroplating going on and a control unit that is on there. So it's like one piece of equipment. It's one box that's easy to handle and you can store all the supplies that you need in there. So that's what I want to build. So I draw that up in a 3D CAD program and 3D printed all these parts. So you have a big bed that's a 24 hour print for those who want to try it themselves. I have some side panels and I have a top section that will house the electronics. It has a dividing wall inside. So in case there are any drops of electrolyte coming into that for whatever reason I can't think of, then it would still be protected. And also there is a big cavity in there for no obvious reason. Well, there is a reason. This is to store your cables. So if you only need the cables short, you can just pull, push them in and they will coil up inside. And if you need them longer, because you want to do pen galvanizing, which is moving around the anode with a, a little sponge that is dunked in electrolyte to cover only parts of your model or your part that you want to have electroplated, you can use that. Or in the case that you will see in the demonstration, I will place the vet outside the machine so you have a better look at it and I can film it easily. So I can just pull out the cables, place them wherever I want. And if I am finished with electroplating, I can store all my supplies and stuff inside the machine and have one box that I can put on the shelf. Hello, I'm James from Workbench Wednesdays, a show about the stuff found on your electronics workbench. Look for new episodes on, well, Wednesdays. You can connect with me over on the Element 14 community. I look forward to seeing you. For now, it is time to get back to watching this week's project video. These parts need to be resistant to a little bit of heat because some of these electrolytes work better when they are warm. And also while electroplating, usually they heat up a bit. So I need a filament that can resist that. I chose PTG because it's easy to print and it holds up pretty good. I won't pour the solutions directly into the container, but it holds water. Instead, I use little glass jars, put them inside, do my electroplating in them and can easily exchange them. And I can also store them inside when I don't use the machine. The machine looks pretty done, but there's something very important missing. The code! Let's look at the code. This is the code for the galvanizing machine. First, we have to declare all the pins. And then we start the serial port. 
declare the pins as inputs and outputs. Don't forget the pull-ups. That's important if you use an encoder. In the main loop, we first switch off the relay. In that case, relay high means it's off because I've connected it in a pretty weird way that is not suitable <laughs> as I discovered later. So don't do that. And then we read the encoder. So if the encoder changes, we change this amount variable. This amount is the number in seconds, how long we want to activate the galvanizing. So we set that and we put out uh, if cycle times have expired, if somebody presses the button. So if somebody presses the enter button, then we turn on the LED so we know it has been pressed. And also if the enter button has been pressed and the amount is not zero, uh, then we activate the galvanizing for this amount of time. And if it is just pressed and the amount is zero, then we just do it as long as it's pressed because if it's pressed, then we do it. And when the loop comes around again, it deactivates it again. So only if the button is pressed, it will be activated. And if the amount is not zero, then we do the galvanizing for a set amount of time. That's very easy and quick to flash. I've bought a lot of supplies for this project, way more than I would actually need. Because I want to try out putting copper onto different metals and 3D printed parts and de-rusting and also plating them with gold because gold. And also on the gold aspect, you can do that with graphite electrodes and use the gold that is in the electrolyte that you buy, which is pretty expensive, but it can also have gold electrodes or gold plated electrodes to give off the electrons for the gold plating. So I'm using old gold plated electronic parts that I won't use anymore. So let's try to reclaim some gold. So the initial experiments with putting copper onto metal, that worked pretty good. Something that kind of worked, but that's maybe the restriction of my power supply is de-rusting. The part is just too big. That's a piece of a chest that I pulled out of the Danube. So that was underwater for I don't know how long. And it's very rusty. It kind of peels it away, but the power supply bottoms out every few seconds. So that's a power issue. If you want to de-rust stuff like that, you need a bigger unit. But moving away from the metal parts, everybody can do that. Let's go on to the plastics. So for my first version, I want to cover all the plastics with a conductive paint. In this case, I use graphite paint because I have it. <laughs> and after you polish it a bit, it gets conductive. But uh, you need a lot of coats to make all the surfaces conductive. So I applied three or four coats, polished them, and then tried it out in my galvanizing machine. The first test runs with the graphite paint were mixed. The low poly banana by Dave Darko, by the way, worked kinda, it's okay-ish. It now looks like a spoiled copper banana, but okay. And the rubber duck, uh, yeah, we, uh, we shall salute rubber ducky for his generous suffering in the name of science and the maker kind. The solution kind of got too warm and he melted a little bit. Also, he was covered in copper partially and then it flaked off and some of the paint came off and yeah. We salute you, Robert Ducky, and I have added some googly eyes for good measure. So that one will live on the shelf for his honorable uh, fighting in the, in the strife for this project. So the next version that I tried is not covering them with graphite paint, but iron paint. So there is like an iron solution available commonly. You can just paint it off, but it's very thick. So if you would do that with some detailed models, you will lose all the detail. And here are the results. The low poly banana worked beautifully. The rubber ducky worked even better. And 
because it has such a nice metallic look and also it's totally squishable. You can form it around like you want and it stays on there. So you can cover flexibles with real metal that is conductive in the end. And then I wanted to preserve that look and wanted to hit it with some clear coat and I accidentally chose the wrong bottle and hit it with just a light dab of uh, plastic primer. So sorry, but now we have a pretty awesome looking metal ducky. Now for the part that you all have been waiting for, gold! And the gold experiments are in and we have a partially gold covered low poly banana by Dave Darko. So I couldn't cover the little ducky because I don't have enough gold electrolyte for such a big thing. I just have enough for this one. So while there is gold on there, it's a little bit reddish, rose gold to be said. That's because there's copper underneath it. So that's the, the gold color that you get with red gold. That's a mixture of copper and gold on top of it. I've already showed that in a live stream and that is your reminder that we do monthly live streams on the Element 14 community. So if you go there, you will find a link to a live stream and you can schedule that and subscribe and stuff. So if you join the live stream, you may get hints before the episode airs or get some background information about builds that you've already seen. And usually it's a very interesting discussion and a lot more information that we can cover in these videos. So check it out. So now I have a real metal plated rubber ducky that is still flexible. And before you ask, yes, it still floats. And could you cover it as much as that it gets hard? Possibly. But the thing is, the moment the coverage is at a certain point, the power supply shorts out. So you need to get a bigger vet or a better power supply. It has limitations, but that's in a project iteration and building upon of it. That's why you can download all the files and the code on Element 14 Presents. And I want you to rebuild that, make your own versions, make it better, do what you want with it. And if you have ideas for applications for metal plating on weird stuff, there are basically no limits. This, for example, is a wooden dowel that I covered in copper. You can do a lot of weird stuff with that. This is my little galvanizing machine. Everything I need is right inside it. So I can put it away in storage and use it quickly whenever I want to. And it's easy to use with just a button and it's programmable. So I hope to see what you would do with galvanizing or metal plating or are there any things you would like to cover with materials that are not supposed to be in combination with those? Let us know in the Element 14 community. I gotta go, there's another project waiting for me.